Hey, you're right, guys. I've been looking recently at texturing XYZ maps um, and how to use it in different applications. Of course, Mari is one that you can use to sort of get displacement maps and bring them into ZBrush to make your models look quite good for the texturing stage. Um, but there's also a way you can actually do it in Substance Painter. So in ArtStation, there's this thing called texturing XYZ multi-channel smart material that you can use for texturing XYZ maps in Substance Painter. You can get a standard use license, which is what I have because I'm not using this for commercial reasons at the moment. If I need to use it for commercial reasons, I would obviously get the commercial use license. Yeah, get the one which best suits you. And when you're in it, you'll find you'll have XYZ channel for Substance Painter version 1.0, 1.1, 1.2. Um, download the latest one. I'd also have a look at the README file. So download the README. Um, you can look at the export settings as well, but it really depends on what you want to, you know, depends if you can export it in certain ways or not. Um, so as you can see through the README, it has a list of things you can do. Yeah, it's, it has uh, your instructions here, which you'll need to look at. In texturing XYZ, um, you can go into your skin. Uh, this is the thing that I've been using for this package, the multi-channel faces. You can get any of them um, when they're on 50% off. They're really cool. So get, get one of these multi-channel faces. Um, it'll download. And then when you have it, you will have an albedo map, a raw albedo, a CP displacement, and a CP utility. In Photoshop, get your displacement map, bring it in. Now in your instruction manual, it says your user zero, so when you come into Substance Painter, your texture set settings, you'll need to add user zero, user two, user three, user four, five, six. Um, all that needs to be added in because it says here. Your user zero displacement map says your Photoshop channel R. It needs to be Photoshop channel R. Um, so you go into Photoshop and in layers and channels, channels you have your RGB, your red, your green, and your blue. If you look at them individually, your red is, you know, looks very different from your green and your blue. Blue would obviously be the tertiary, um, green would be secondary, and R would be the other one. I can't remember the name. Um, but yeah, all you need to do is export each of these ones separately. Now, the way I found about this was I took a picture of each one, so I knew exactly what ones were which. I would then right click on one of the channels and right click again and delete. And we can see this is the blue channel. But if you go into export and export as, it's yellow. So when you go into export as, it's just yellow. You have no detail whatsoever. So go into image mode and grayscale. And that makes it a gray texture. So now you can go into export export as and now it's gray so that will be your blue channel so export it name it and uh, displacement blue now i come back here and i can do the exact same here but let's delete the yellow and that's obviously the green channel uh, so do the same go into image mode grayscale file export export as um, the one thing which I just forgot about, um, yeah, I suggest reducing all the XYZ multi-channel map size by 25% in Photoshop. This is to avoid slow, you know, it running slowly or crashing. So yeah, the best, best thing to do is make scale 75%, um, just to make it run a bit faster when you're doing the texturing. Um, obviously, if you, have a, if you have a really, really fast machine, then sure, you can do it 100%. Um, but having 75 just adds that little bit of 
um, protection in case it crashes or runs slow. So 75% export that as the blue um, because it's the blue channel. Now let's delete that. And I think the cyan will be the red. So cyan image mode, grayscale, file, export, export as 75%, make sure it's that. Um, and yeah, so those will be your RGB channels. Uh, see, displacement R, secondary R, tertiary, well, secondary G, tertiary B. And then the next thing you'll have to do is bring in your utility. Let's delete the background, so the other one, so it's, you have your utility here. Now you'll find that you have your red channel looks like this, your G channel looks like this, and your blue channel looks like this. So I literally do the exact same thing as before. Flatten layers if need be. Let's see, that's flatten image. Now it's the background, um, or you could have just imported it and started a new project. Either way, come in here, delete that. Delete that. Yellow will be the blue channel, so the utility B channel, which will be your specular. You know, image, mode, grayscale, do all that again. Um, then if we're going to delete that and delete the yellow, the magenta will be the G channel, uh, so the melanin. Um, do the exact same thing again, you know, grayscale, 75% export, and your cyan. <clears throat> so your cyan will be your red channel, and do the exact same export settings. Next, um, you know, you want to bring in your face raw albedo or CL albedo. I'm not sure which is the difference between them, so I'm not the best to um, ask about it, but I brought in my raw albedo. Um, yeah. Flatten image. This one, so with the albedo, all you need to do is file export you don't need to get rid of any colors or anything it's just file export and 75 percent so export that as 75 percent and you should have all your 75 percent maps um so here i've got displacement red displacement green displacement blue the utility blue green red i also did the nose um because when you buy a multi-channel face you get the nose textures so I did the exact same thing again. I got the displacement and the utility and then, yeah. So once you have all your textures, um, come into Substance Painter, then bring in your XYZ multi-channel um, texture that you just downloaded. Bring that in. It will come as a smart material and then you will import it to the shelf um, so it stays there and it's, you know, it's in your library forever. You'll have this. Um, let me just do that so bring that in now be your xyz multi-channel uh, material your texture set settings come into channels and click the plus icon and there'll be a you know user zero user two zero user three your user four five six add all that in to your um, texture set settings and in layers you want to under the, so uh, what was it? In the material, come down to texture XYZ, projection tool here. So click on that. Disable everything except user zero, two, three, four, five, and six. Get your albedo at 75%. Drag that into your project. Under the texture and current session or shelf, depending on what, how long you want to have it in the uh, in your library. So import that to the shelf. Albedo 75%. Then bring in your displacement textures, bring all that in. Utility, so bring the utility in. You can bring the nose in if you've done the nose and the other bit of the nose. Right. Now you have that, 
Um, where's textures? Textures. Projection, projection tool. Get your albedo, 75%. Then your, it will say here, you need your RGB, so displacement, secondary, tertiary, at user zero to three. I'm gonna close it down. Um, where is it? Displacement. Displacement red. Displacement green and displacement blue. Then user four, five, six will be your utility red, green, blue. Utility red, utility green, and utility blue. Right, so now you've got that, you can project. If the projection will work, that's weird. So now I've got to put in everything again. Right, there we go, it's showing up. Right, so that's showing up. And now if you hold S and right click, you can enlarge it, S and left click, you can rotate it, and S and middle click, you can move it. Um, and, <clears throat> and Substance Painter, you can just you know move it normally as you would. So I come into here and I enlarge a bit, Let's start painting. So at first you'll see, <clears throat> so at first you'll see all the um, color doesn't show. But if you want the color to show, you have to go to Lambert Map and make it un like not visible. So you start painting that, and yeah, you can just start applying all the texturing, texturing XYZ maps. So after a while, I, uh, I did this before, but I did, the, well, I did the texturing a while ago, so I'm just gonna show you what I've done before. All the, pro all the process before was what you have to do anyway, so now I'll just fast forward it a bit um, to show you all the textures. You'll see Lambert map is, you know, the, the color looks quite good. If you take the color off, you know, you have your, you know, normals and displacement maps all here, uh, or height maps. Um, it all looks pretty good. Um, I, I quite like the result of this, um, this plugin that's been made or the smart material that's been made. Really like how easy it is just to sort of bring all your textures in and you know mess around a bit and get that texturing XYZ detail onto your models that easily. Um, I, I liked Mary um, before, but this just makes it so much easier, um, especially when you're making game ready characters. So yeah, there's not much else I can really say about it apart from if you want to try texturing XYZ out, haven't got Mary, but you've got a Substance Painter, definitely try this. Even if you have got Mary, um, still give this a go because it's really, really easy to do um, and still you get great results. A little bit ago, I wanted to try out, you know, texturing XYZ, well, the Substance Painter material into Marmoset, see what it would look like on a model. In a, uh, yeah, wanted to see what it looked like on a model in sort of a um, good rendering engine. Um, Marmoset Toolbag 4 recently came out and you can use ray tracing techniques on it or ray tracing renders, which I really like. Um, so that's what it looks like without the ray tracing on, but when you do ray tracing, No, when you do ray tracing on this sort of model with with the um, textures that are created, 
it looks really clean looks like a really good model i definitely like it and yeah i'll probably definitely try this method again for my other models I'll probably look at getting some more textures as well just to you know mix it up with how it looks but yeah um that's that's all for this video i really thought that this well i thought that this method was really helpful and you know if i knew about this material a while ago texturing would have been so much more enjoyable um so yeah if anyone if anyone enjoyed it please leave a like and subscribe i'm gonna try and release more videos soon if i can um i might try to do some more texturing xyz stuff um, i might even try doing an eye I um texture but after seeing this video I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys will be able to do that anyway so yeah if you liked it please let me know um other than that I hope you all enjoyed it bye